فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن the explanation or in the explanation of the book ثلاثة الأصول written by Sheikh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله تعالى Last lesson we spoke about a dua supplication and we also spoke about the evidence which the author brought the evidence in which the author brought for a dua inshallah ta'ala today we're going to go into al khawf and we're also going to mention the evidence with it that the author himself brings rahimahullah ta'ala so the shaykh rahimahullah the second type of ibadah which he mentioned after a dua was al khawf and he says wa dalil al khawfi and the evidence for al khawfi is qawluhu ta'ala the statement of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fala takhafuhum do not fear them wa khafuni fear me in kuntum mu'minin if you are people who have belief ibn al qayyim rahimahullah he states in his book Tariq al page 437. He states that khawf from the four categories of ibadah that we mentioned yesterday, or the two types more like, the two types of ibadah that we mentioned, because from each one we extracted two extra ones. This one, which is al-khawf, Ibn al-Qayyim states that it falls under Amal al-qalb. It's the action of the heart. It's an action of the heart. And it is, and it is. Al-khawf, maqamun, it's a position, really, in our religion. Min afdali maqamat al-deen. From the greatest statuses in the religion. It plays a big role in our religion. And that's why, when Allah tabarak wa ta'ala mentioned in the verse that the author brought, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala stipulated Iman to it because the strong bond between the two. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ Do not fear them. وَخَافُونِ fear me. إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are people who have belief. So there's that strong bond and there is that that khawf has with Al-Iman, your belief. What does Al-Khawf mean? Al-Imam Al-Raghib Al-Asfahani Rahimahullah Amal Al-Asfahani However way you want to say it He has a book called Al-Mufradat He says that Al-Khawf means Tawakku'u makruhin An amaratin Madhnoonatin Aw ma'lumatin He says that Khawf is When you expect Harm Due to signs you, Due to signs That you think Signs that you think are going to bring you harm. You saw something. Signs came together. You think to yourself. You speculate that there's going to come harm from this. Or you're 100% sure that this is it's going to happen now. Something's going to happen. This is the definition he gave. And he mentions that الخوف, The opposite to khawf is al-amn. To not be scared. Safety. But what we have to understand is that the khawf of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala la yuradu bihi the intent behind it is not that the person becomes scared the person becomes scared like he's scared of a lion that's not the, that's not what's meant for Allah's fear subhanahu wa ta'ala rather the fear of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is what leads for you to stay away from that which he prohibited and for you to come with what he told you to come with. وَلِذَلِكَ The scholars they say لَا يُعَدُّ خَائِفًا He is not considered a person who is scared of Allah مَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِلْذُنُوبِ تَارِكًا If the person is not one who leads of sins. Okay? So if the fear of Allah wa ta'ala 
is not pushing you to is not pushing you to come with that which he told you to come with and to stay away from that which he told you to stay away from then truly this is not a fear that's praiseworthy okay but as for the in simple terms ibn al-qayyim mentions in simple terms in his book madarij al-salikin that it's actually fear means from allah wa ta'ala and the difference between the fear of allah and the creation's fear is that the creation when you're scared of them whether it be a lion whether it be an object that the humans have made such as cars and whatnot and you're scared that the car might hit you all of that fear is that when you feel it you run away from the thing that you're scared of whereas allah you run from him to him and this is the difference between the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of the of the creation also another thing is that and I think this is the one that Al-Alama Abdurrahman Yahya Al-Mu'allimi mentions in his kitab Raf'u Al-Ishtibah The fear of Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala is, is a khawf sirri In other words When you're scared of the creation You know that the harm that you see that they can do to you It can be disabled To be disabled And the benefit that is brought to you regard from them Can also be disabled it could be stopped. You see, you know that the authorization of that is in the hands of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. He is the one who does tasarruf. Who he is the one who controls it and allows it to happen or disables it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person believes that so and so is actually gonna make this happen to them, they can, for instance, you're scared of um, your company is going to uh um, your company is going to uh, For instance Fire you And you're going to lose your job And you actually believe Your risk is connected to you, So you're scared Are you going to be fired Because so many other people Were fired No فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي Means That even if they do do it And they make the thought of doing it Allah tabarak wa ta'ala قَدْ يُعَطِّلُ He might disable it May not happen Does that make sense? So the fear that you think that they are able to do shouldn't be with the thought and the belief that they're just a means basically. And you shouldn't believe that the means can do everything. The final goal and the final authorization is in the hands of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he says Al-Khawful Mahmood the praiseworthy fear is ma hajazaka and maharim Allah, it is anything that prevents you, stops you from that which Allah has prohibited. So, in reality, that is the haqiqatul khawf. That's the true, really, that's the true meaning of what khawf means. Is anything that prevents you, holds you back from that which Allah wa Taala prohibited you. There's also a statement of the noble Imam, the great scholar. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali Ibn Rajab actually wrote a book in this regard He called it at takhwifu min al-Nar It's a book that's powerful And he talks about many things He talks about the amount of fear that is needed In other words In other words The amount of fear that if you don't come with You're not a believer And the amount Because the Iman requires a portion for you to come with for you to be a believer. That's the Asrul Iman, right? Are you there? The Asrul Iman. And then you have an amount that, so the, the minimum amount of your Iman, the scholars they stated, right? So what's the Asal, and the, 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 the amount that's needed for fear? He also mentions it, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to quote him, inshallah ta'ala. Ibn Rajab says, Inna Allah khalaq al khalqa. Allah created the creation. He created them so they worship him, so they fear him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And later, inshallah ta'ala, when we come to uh, when we come to uh, it, we'll speak about the difference between al khawf and al khashya. There's a difference between al khawf and al khashya. The difference between the two, we'll speak about it, inshallah ta'ala. But for now, let's just take it as it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created the creation so they know him, so they know who he is, and they worship him, and that they fear him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَصَبَ لَهُمُ الْأَدِلَّةَ الدَّالَّةِ عَلَىٰ عَظَمَتِهِ 
Allah tabarak wa ta'ala also placed, Ibn Rajab is saying, Allah also placed subhanahu wa ta'ala signs showing you how great and noble he is, how powerful he is. Wa nasaba Allah placed lahumul adilla evidences, universal signs, textual evidences he's put in place. Ala azabatihi wa kibriyaihi. How great, how strong and how powerful he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how majestic he is. Why? Liyahabuhu. وَيَخَافُوهُ خَوْفَ الْإِجْلَالِ So they fear him, they honor him, they honor him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, خوف الإجلال But the fear of Allah being a fear of respect, a fear of honoring. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَوَصَفَ Ibn Rajab goes on to say, and Allah described for them, شِدَّةَ عَذَابِهِ The severity of his punishment. وَدَارِ عِقَابِهِ And the place of punishment he has prepared, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is his nar. التي أعدها in which he has in which he has prepared لمن عصاه the one who the one who disobeys him ليتقوه so that the people can place a veil a shield they can come with taqwa بصالح الأعمال with righteous actions Allah told us سبحانه وتعالى he say here the severe punishment that he has and he's able to do and he told us about the hellfire that he's prepared to the ones who disobey him why? So the people can place a shield of righteous actions. The taqwa here, he says, to place a shield of righteous actions to protect yourself from the severe punishment of Allah wa ta'ala and the hellfire that he has prepared. subhanahu, And because of that, Allah has repeated many times fi kitabi in his book, dhikr nari the mentioning of the hellfire. وَمَا أَعَدَّهُ فِيهَا لِأَعْدَائِهِ And that which Allah has prepared, for the people, for the people of the hellfire, min al adabi wa nakali, in terms of punishment and destruction and now and torment, wa mahtawa alayhi min al zakumi wa al bari'i wa al hamimi, and Allah tells the description and the in details of the things that are going to be taking place in the hellfire, the chains and uh, the tree that's in the hellfire that they will be eating from and the food that they will eat and how it will destroy they. Their inter uh, internal internally and their intestines and whatnot. إلى غير ذلك مما فيه من العرائم والأهوال and all of that he mentions them سبحانه وتعالى that have great great mentioning in the Quran. ودعا عباده and after that Allah called his slaves بذلك إلى خشيته وتقوى to be fearful of him. And to come with piety and to take a shield of righteous actions and righteous deeds from it. والمسارعتي, and to hasten. به, and to hasten in that which he commands subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to hasten also to that which he loves subhanahu wa ta'ala and is pleased with. واجتنابي, and also to stay away from. ما ينهى عنه that which he prohibits subhanahu wa ta'ala. ويكرهه ويأباه. That which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala hates and that which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala refuses to stay away from it. فَمَنْ تَأَمَّلَ الْكِتَابَ Ibn Rajab says anybody who observed the book of Allah فَمَنْ تَأَمَّلَ الْكِتَابَ الْكَرِيمِ وَأَدَارَ فِكْرَهُ فِيهِ And he ponders over it and he thinks over it وَجَدَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْعَجَبَ الْعُجَابِ He will find great fascination in the Quran regarding this. وَكَذَلِكَ السُنَّةَ الصَّحِيحَ وَكَذَلِكَ السُنَّةُ الصَّحِيحَةِ And also, anyone who looks and observes that which is in the authentic sunnah الَّتِي هِيَ مُفَسِّرَةٌ وَمُبَيِّنَةٌ لِمَعَانِ الْكِتَابِ Anyone who looks at the sunnah which is an explanation of the Qur'an Anyone who looks at it وَكَذَلِكَ سِيَرُ السَّلَفِ And also anyone who looks at the biography of the pious predecessors أَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ The people of knowledge والإيمان and the people of faith من الصحابة such as the companions والتابعين and the students of the companions لهم بإحسان من تأملها anyone who observes it عليم أحوال القوم he will realize the situation of these individuals and how they were and inshallah we're going to see extensive examples as we come to it inshallah وتعالى وما كانوا عليه من الخوف والخشية والإخبات and they will see how they were scared and how they were fearful 
وأن ذلك هو الذي رقاهم إلى تلك الأحوال الشريفة والمقامات السني والمقامات السنيات and due to the fear that they had in them is what raised them in their affairs and made them honorable من شدة الاجتهاد and due to it they strove very hard في الطاعات in obedience وانفكاك عن دقائق الأعمال والمكروهات فضل عن المحرمات and they also stayed away from the things that are مكروه just dislike to Allah let alone the things which Allah تبارك وتعالى prohibited their fear took them to stay away from the مكروهات let alone the محرمات due to what they realized from the Quran and the Sunnah the Sahabas and the Tabi'een and those who follow them in good وقال he also says and that which he said التخويف من النار he mentions it in page 7 page 700 and 6 sorry 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 page 6 and 7 page 6 and 7 he رحمه الله also says القدر الواجب the amount that's obligatory he's going to tell us the amount of fear that's obligatory من الخوف the amount of fear that is obligatory is ما حمل على أداء الفرائض واجتناب المحارم it is that which makes you come with the obligatory acts and makes you stay away from that which Allah has prohibited سبحانه وتعالى فإن زاد على ذلك if the person increases onto that in the, in, in the sense where his fear grows a bit more if you increase onto that a bit more so, so the first stage, the, the amount that's obligatory, like is this. A khawf, a fear, that makes you do what? The fara'id, the obligatory things. And the fear that makes you stay away from the prohibited things. That's the amount that is minimum. But if the person says, no, I'm actually going to take a f- step further. I'm going to I- increase onto that. So he goes on saying, فَإِنْ زَادَ عَلَى ذلك, If the person increases on that, بحيث صار باعثا للنفوس على التشمير في نوافل الطاعات والانفكاك عن دقائق المكروهات that the person his fear increases and it pushes him to it pushes him to come with the voluntary act and it makes him stay away from the makruhat the things that are not haram they haven't reached the stage of haram but they're makruh they're just disliked are you with me? وَالتَّبَسُّطِ فِي فُضُولِ الْمُبَاحَاتِ And also the fear makes you leave off the nonsense things that are mubah like in. They're not haram. They're just nonsense. Okay? كَانَ ذَلِكَ فَضْلًا مَحْمُودًا That's a praiseworthy amount. So he mentioned here two stages. The first one is the minimum. The minimum what it does to you is al faraid do the obligatory things. You pray five daily prayers, you fast a month of Ramadan, you do your hajj, you stay away from riba, you stay away from lying, you stay away from cheating, you stick to the minimum. The fear has taken you to that amount. Another person is taking it a step further. The step further they took it is that they're, they're not just sticking to the uh, wajibat. It's actually they are coming with the Nawafil, voluntary. They're praying Qiyamul Layl. They're not missing Salatul Duha. They're praying their 12 Raka'a Sunnah daily. And it also makes them what? And it also makes them stay away from the makruhat, the things that are disliked. And also the Fudulul Mubahat. Fudulul Mubahat are persons, you know, he's eating. He likes eating and enjoying and, you know, he likes to he likes desserts. He likes to have his desserts. And the Mubah. But it's fudul. Fudul mubahat. You see? Oh, he likes to have chit chat every day, you know, a little bit. Not talk, He doesn't talk about haram. But he will not necessarily talk about that, which is khair. He'll just talk about normal, ordinary things. You see? He leaves all of that. His fear has taken him to leave all of that. Which is a stage higher than the previous stage. He says, كان ذلك فضلا محمودا. That's praiseworthy now. فَإِنْ تَزَايَدَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ But what about if the person says, no, no, no. Uh, his fear goes even a st- stage higher than that. And if it goes a stage higher than that, if it goes a stage higher than that, 
بأن أورث it inherits you this fear actually brings to you مرضا illnesses أو موتا death أو هما لازما or you're depressed and you're distressed all the time بحيث to the extent where يقطع عن السعي في اكتساب الفضائل المطلوبة المحبوبة المحبوبة لله لم يكن محمودا that it gets you to a level where you become sick you probably even die you might even die out of it or you are depressed and you're distressed all the time at un, every minute you're distressed to the extent that it stops you from doing anything you don't even come with voluntary acts you don't do anything the sheikh says this amount lam yakul mahmudan this amount is not praiseworthy the person is always just crying He's just crying non-stop and it's not taking him to, it's not making him do anything. He's not coming with anything. He's just scared. Every time you sit with him, okay, I'm scared. And the fear, this is not praiseworthy. Ibn al-Hafid ibn al-Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah ibn al-Hajar al-Asqalani in his Kitab Fathul Bari, the 11th volume, page 313, he says, إن القوفة من المقامات العلية فيها is from the highest levels وَهُوَ مِنْ لَوَازِمِ الْإِيمَانِ and it is also from the things that necessitate iman قَالَ تَعَالَى Allah says وَخَافُونِ فِي مِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ if you're believers you see وَقَالَ تَعَالَى and that's the evidence that the author used by the way Muhammad Abdul Wahab وَقَالَ تَعَالَى Allah also says فَلَا تَخْشَوُ النَّاسَ Don't fear the people وَخْشَوْنِي فِي مِي وَقَالَ تَعَالَى Allah also says إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ The ones who fear Allah تبارك وتعالى are the scholars إِنَّمَا is من أدوات الحصر يَخْشَ اللَّهَ which is the مفعول به مقدم the مفعول به has been brought forward right and it shows another حصر you see مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ وقال صلى الله ابن رجب ابن ابن حجر goes on to say وقال وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم the messenger said أنا أعلمكم بالله I am the one who knows Allah the most وأشدكم له خشية and I am the one who fears him the most you see that hadith of course is in Sahihain I'm still reading the statement of Hafiz ibn Hajar he goes on to say وكلما كان العبد أقرب إلى ربه كان أشد له خشية من من دونه وقد وصف الله تعالى الملائكة بقوله this is a qa'ida a qa'ida Ibn Hajar brings from this based on the ayah inna ma yakhsha Allah min ibadihi an ulama and an ayah that he's going to bring which is every time a person is closer to Allah then his fear of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is higher than everyone else wa qad wasaf Allah ta'ala and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he described the angels as to be what yakhafuna rabbahum min fawqihim they fear their lord who is above them the angels. And also Allah said about the, uh, the prophets. The prophets. الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ رِسَالَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْشَوْنَهُ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ The messengers who are the ones who are conveying the message of their Lord and who fear him. وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ And they don't fear anyone other than Allah. So from these two verses that he brought, that shows us what? The angels... And also the prophets and the messengers, their fear is great, it's high. And also, who who comes as uh, as well in that in that category as well is the ulama. In the ma'ikh shallah min ibadi ulama, the scholars and the people who know Allah Taala. The more you're closer to Allah, the more your fear is. Wa inna ma kana khawf al muqarrabin ashad. Ibn Hajar says, the ones who are closer to Allah, their fear is also serious. لأنهم لأنهم يطالبون بما لا يطال لأنهم يطالبون بما لا يطالب به غيرهم فيراعون تلك المنزلة. The reason is because they are requested to come with that which others are not requested to come with. So they observe that status that has been given to them. They observe it. You're a student of knowledge, and I always say this to you all. You're a student of knowledge. You've taken on this title. Things that can be accepted from the Ammatul Nas, from the general mass, it won't be accepted from you. My teacher used to say to me that 
the things that are nawafil voluntary for you is wajib and take it like that and the things which are makruh that I disliked for you is haram not that my teacher is trying to change the hukum of Allah wa ta'ala. no not at all what he's trying to say to me is that you actually live your life like that so don't look for rukhsa and say oh but it's a khilafi right yeah okay I'll just take that which is easy for, for you you take the safest of all you take that opinion that is safest for you the reason is because you are in a position you are sitting in a position you have a title from this title comes responsibilities comes it comes with it responsibilities and you have to uphold those responsibilities uphold those responsibilities now so this statement is very powerful, powerful which is لأنهم يطالبون بما لا يطالب بهم غيرهم فيراعون تلك المنزلة they observe it the Prophet observed that title and that position. Their fear was more. And that's why the Prophet what did he say? Look what he said. أنا أعلمكم بالله. I, I'm the one who knows Allah more than all of you guys. And so because of my knowledge, something has come with it. Which is what? And because of the وَأَشَدُّكُمْ لَهُ خَشْيَةً I am the one who fears him the most. And the angels, they are the ones who what? They're the ones who know Allah more than us. And because of the fact they know him more than us, what happened? So anybody really, to be honest, who fights with the concept of knowledge is trying to fight with the concept of what? He's trying to fight with the actions of the heart. Because every action of the heart, all of them come stronger and they become more powerful when, when knowledge increases. And the more a person's knowledge increases and it becomes the more, the more the a'malul qulub, the actions of the heart increases, such as al raghba hope in Allah wa ta'ala increases more, the people's fear increases more, the hope that the people have increases more, the, the, the reliance of the people on tawakkul increases more. All of that is connected to, to the knowledge of the person. Now, well, he, and he goes on to say in Ibn Hajar, وَلِأَنَّ الْوَاجِبَ لِلَّهِ مِنْهُ الشُّكْرُ عَلَى الْمَنْزِلَةِ and he goes on to say it, well, and that which is obligatory is minhu from him is a shukru gratitude ala al on this position that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given. So you can go to, inshallah ta'ala, Fathul Bari, Ibn Hajar, statement is very powerful. Now, inshallah ta'ala, I want to speak about something else regarding al khawfu which is the usage of the word al khawfu in the Qur'an. The usage of the word al khawfu fi al-Qur'an al-Kareem, in this Qur'an of us. Al-Imam al-Fayruz Abadi, rahimahullah, al-Fayruz Abadi has a book called Basairu Dawi Tamiz. It's a book I advised you before, all of you, and I told you to buy it. It's a very powerful book and it's a very beneficial book. الفيروز آبادي he says وقد ورد الخوف في القرآن الكريم على وجوه منها fear has come in the Quran in many different ways fear has come in the Quran many different ways so he gives us five five usages when the word خوف comes in the Quran there's five different meanings that it holds he says الأول the first of the five is بمعنى القتل والهزيمة it is killing and it is also hazima which is loss lack of victory and he brings the ayah in surah to, the ayah in surah nisa ayah 83 where allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says wa idha ja'ahum when it comes to them amrun min al-amni aw al killing Qatl, matters that involve fighting, jihad. So because how? Amrun min al-amri awil khawfi. Matters that involve fighting, bloodshed. Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 155, he brings, wala nablu wa nakum, we will test you, bi shay'in min al-khawfi, ay al-qatli. Fear here means, it means al khawf means here al qatl, death. We'll kill, we'll bring death to you guys. Now, 
The second meaning is al-harb, fighting, battle. Wal-qital. Allah says, فَإِذَا جَاءَ الْخَوْفُ رَأَيْتَهُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِذَا جَاءَ الْخَوْفُ When khawf comes, here khawf means al-harb, when the battle comes, and the war comes. رَأَيْتَهُمْ You see them, يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ They are looking at you. يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ نَظَرَ الْمَغْشِيَ عَلَيْهِمْ They look at you and look as though they are, as though something has covered them, as, as though they fainted, like they, 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 they are passing out. The way they hate death and they're scared of jihad and they don't want to fight for the cause of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. الثالث, the third one is بمعنى العلم والدراية It's used in the context of meaning and comprehension. And he brings قوله تعالى آية 229 فمن, uh, Sorry, he brings آية 182 in Surah Al-Baqarah آية 182 فَمَنْ خَافَ مِنْ مُوصٍ جَنَفًا فَمَنْ خَافَ أَيْ مَنْ عَلِمًا The one who knows. Also Allah says in 229, Surah Al-Baqarah, 229, إِلَّا أَنْ يَخَافَ أَلَّا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَخَافَ means here what? إِلَّا أَنْ يَعْلَمَ That they know. Also Allah says in Surah Al-Nisa, Ayah 3, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ If you fear, أَلَّا تُقْسِطُوا فِي الْيَتَابَى أي علمتم it means if you know you're not going to, going to be just in the affairs of the orphan number four is بمعنى النقص deficiency a reduction and reduction and that is سورة النحل آية 47 Allah says أو يأخذهم على تخوف أي على تنقص على تنقص reduction the fifth meaning is that بمعنى الرعب والخشية من العذاب والعقوبة It's the one that we know which is fear Which is to be scared To be uh, in a state of fear And that is what's in Surah Al-Sajda Ayah uh, آية 16 Surah Al-Sajda Ayah 16 Allah says يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا خوفا وطمعا Here means أي خوفا Fear Scared So those are the five meanings Which the Quran uses when it uses the word khawf. Okay? Now, the types of khawf there are. The types of khawf there are. There are two types of khawf. The first type of khawf is khawfun jibiliyun tabi'iyun fitriyun. It's the natural fear. The innate type of fear. There's no sin for you regarding this one. It's the one that you're scared of a lion, for instance. It's the fear of having towards a lion. The king of the jungle, they call him. Huh? To be scared of him. Or that you see a car coming on a very high speed towards you. And so you become scared of it. Or you're scared of drowning. Or for example, you're scared of a... You're scared of a flight. You're scared of high buildings. This khawf is called... Jibiliyun tabi'iyun fitriyun. So don't use this as an evidence to say فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ That type of fear is خوف جبليون طبيعيون فطريون Allah created you in it and it's something that is in you. As for the second type of fear which is the خوف which is شرعيون and it's the خوف which you're not allowed to divert for anybody other than Allah تبارك وتعالى Are you there? And that is خوف, the fear of harm and benefit coming to you. The issue pertaining to you're scared that you might not get this benefit or you're scared that a harm may come to you. You see? That is specifically and uniquely for Allah wa ta'ala. And a khawfu sirrin. This type of one, you know that this card that's coming at you is a means to harm you. Now you believe that and that's what you're scared of. But you know the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate. Decision is with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. It might hit you and you might walk out without anything happening to you. But if you believe to yourself and your fear makes you believe that this thing can harm you in and within itself, صحيح? then it becomes a what? It becomes sarfu ibad li ghayrillahi. And that goes against the, and it go, because it goes against the ayah of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Surah Al An'am, ayah, ayah 17. Ayah 17, Allah says, وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ 
فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُو If harm touches you, there's no one who's able to uplift that from you except Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. وَإِيَمْسَسْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And also if good comes to you, then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is able to uh, to do everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did in the hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad in his Muslim and, and Tirmidhi. And other than them to be said in Sahih, the chain of narration is is authentic. On the Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the authority of Ibn Abbas, that Ibn Abbas said, كُنْتُ خَلْفَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يوبا. فقال, I was one day sitting behind the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and he said to me, يا غلام, oh young boy, إِنِّي أُعَلِمُكَ كَلِمَاتِ I'm going to teach you some words. احفظ الله يحفظك. Safeguard Allah tabarak wa ta'ala his religion and his boundaries. يحفظك Allah will protect you subhanahu wa ta'ala. احفظ الله Protect Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's boundary and his religion and safeguard it. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala تجده تجاهك You will find him that will guide you through your life. إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ When you ask, ask from only Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ And if you seek aid and help, فَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ Seek it from Allah alone. وَعَلَمْ Know أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ the, the, the Ummah لَوْ وَجْتَمَعَتْ If they come together عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ تَبَرَفِتْ يُوَ أَيْمَاتَ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ They will not be able to benefit you on a matter إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ Except something that Allah has written for you سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَلَوْ وَجْتَمَعُوا And if they do come together عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ To harm you بِشَيْءٍ إِنَ أَيْمَاتَ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ And they, they won't be able to harm you except in something that Allah has written for you subhanahu wa ta'ala rufi'atil aqlam the pens are lifted wajaffatil suhuf and the scrolls have dried so the prophet alayhi salatu salam what did he teach him he taught him alayhi salatu salam or he, he the prophet taught of ibn abbas and this is not a lesson specific to him it's a lesson to each and every one of us and that is that if the ummah everyone comes together they are not able to what? Harm you except Allah has, if it's written it for you. And they're not also able to benefit you unless Allah wa ta'ala has written it for you. So that's what everybody, every one of us has to know and believe. وَلِذَلِكَ فُضَيْلِ بْنِ عِيَاضِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ He said, مَنْ خَافَ اللَّهَ Anyone who fears Allah wa ta'ala دَلَّهُ الْخَوْفُ The fear will show you it will take you to ala kulli khayrin every good wa kullu qalbin laysa fihi khawfun and every heart and every heart that does not have fear in it fawa qalbul kharib it's a corrupt heart it's an empty heart wa lidhalika al imam abdullah ibn mubarak in his kitab al zuhd Ibn Abi Dunya, he has in his Mawsu'a, in his Mawsu'a, one of them he mentions in his book. So in the Mawsu'a, there's many books in there. Kitabul Wajal. There's a book called Kitabul Wajal. In that book of his. And Abu Nu'aym al Asbahani in his Hilyatul Awliya wa Tabaqatul Asfiya. And also Al Imam al Mizi, Abu Hajjaj al Mizi, in his Kitab Tahribul Kamal. He mentions that Al Mughirah ibn, uh, ibn Makhadish. He asked Hassan al-Basri a question. He said to Abu Hassan al-Basri, Ya Aba Sa'id, O oh Abu Sa'id, كيف نصنع, What do we do in a gathering? بمجالسة, what do we do in a gathering of a people who are with us here? يحدثوننا, they give us stories. They talk to us. They narrate narrations for us. And what they do is حتى تكاد قلوبنا أن تطير. And they place fear in our hearts and they scare us so much until our hearts are about to fly out of our... Meaning they scare us so much. What do we do with those people? Whenever we go to their gatherings, all they do is they scare us. What should we do? And then Hassan al-Basri said to him, Ayyuha al-Shaykh, he's talking to Al-Mughira. He said, Ayyuha al-Shaykh, O Shaykh, Innaka you verily, Wallahi la antus... Wallahi for you... To befriend these people who place fear in your heart. That when you come the day of judgment, you find safety from you find safety. Because if they, they scared you so much. And that you find safety the day of judgment is best of better for you. And then to befriend a people who place hope 
in your heart. And when you come the day of judgment, you are scared, you're terrorized. Because Hassan al-Basri is picking up from the narration of the Prophet where he said, Allah does not combine for a slave two fears. If you were scared in this earth, Allah will not scare you the day of judgment. You see? But if you were full of hope in this world, and you, you believed, don't judge me, let me enjoy myself. Allah is going to judge me. And I'm gonna, and you take it very lightly and you fill yourself with too much raja, and you're not scared, then remember the day of judgment that you're going to be scared. So what the believer needs to do is to be scared of Allah wa Taala, and to have that in them. One of the most, women amta'i ma qara'tu from the greatest things that I read, to be honest, it amazed me, was ma akhrajahu tirmidhi wa ibn majah, that which al-imamu tirmidhi narrated, and that which ibn majah narrated. Even though I just mentioned it right now to you guys, but the siyaq and the context that the Prophet said it was amazing. And this hadith, haqiqatan, it's something that amazes me. And that is the hadith of Anas ibn Malikin, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet, dakhala ala shabin, he entered onto a youth, a young boy. Wawa fil mawti, and he was on his deathbed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, kayfa tajiduka? How do I find you? How are you? How do you feel? Qale, the boy, the shab, the youth, he responded by saying, Wallahi ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Inni akhafullah, I fear Allah, Wa inni arju, wa inni, inni arju Allah, I hope of Allah wa ta'ala, Wa inni akhafu dhunubi, but I also fear my sins. Now, Wallahi, I want you to think here right now. This is a youth, a young boy. At the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam time To show you what kind of people he had Alayhi Salaatu Wasallam around him And how he nurtured them And look at the youths of our time today Look at the ones of ours to our time The Prophet is asking on his deathbed How do you find yourself? How are you? And he's responded by saying Inni arju Allah I hope from Allah wa ta'ala Wa inni akhafu dhunubi But I also fear my sins I also fear my sins فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet said to him لا يجتمعان في قلب عبد those two you have just mentioned they do not combine in the heart of a slave في مثل هذا الموطن in this particular place إلا أعطاه الله except Allah gives him ما يرجو that which he hopes for وآمنه أن الله will protect him from مما يخاف that which he fears so this has shown that if a believer has that balance of being scared and having hope in himself. Fearing Allah wa ta'ala and hoping for Allah wa ta'ala. He doesn't have those two and does not bring those two together except Allah wa ta'ala will give him what he hopes for and Allah will protect him from what he fears. What he fears. And Imam Al-Bukhari and Muslim, both of them narrated and this is also from the most powerfulest things or narrations I've come across. From the greatest powerful narrations that I've come across. Fis Sahihayni, Bukhari and Muslim. Min hadith Abi Sa'id al Khudri on the authority of Abu Sa'id al Khudri. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dhakara rajulan fi man kana salaf. Dhakara rajulan fi man kana salaf. Ay, aw qablakum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned a story of a, a man who was in the previous nations, previous people. آتاه الله مالا وولدا Allah gave him wealth and Allah تبارك وتعالى gave him children. فلما حضر when death came to him, death time came to him, قال لبنيه he said to his children. أي أب كنت what kind of father was I to you guys? And they said خير أب the best of fathers. Qala then he said to them, فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَبْ فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَبْتَئِرْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرًا Qatadat ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi explained what the word يَبْتَئِرْ means. In other words, he meant لَمْ يَدَّخِرْ I have not stored. 
I have not stored anything for the day of judgment. With Allah, I have nothing prepared. And if he goes to Allah and he meets him, Allah is going to punish him with severe punishment. He's talking about himself. Fanduru, look at my look at my situation, all my sons. If I die, if I die, burn me. Until I turn into ashes. Fastahkuni. Burn me, burn me so much until I turn into ashes. When I turn into ashes. ثم إذا كان ريح عاصف a windy day look for a windy day and when it's a windy day فأذروني فيها let me go let me blow into the wind and what he did was فأخذ he took from them مواثيقهم oaths promise me you promise me as well you promise me and a lot of kids all of you guys you all promise me okay ففعلوا his children did as they promised and they followed their father's command فَقَالَ اللَّهُ When they finished what they did, Allah just said, كُنْ بِي Allah said, كُنْ بِي Even Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin kind of disliked the usage of this, but بَيْنَ الْكَافِ وَالنُونَ In between the kaf and noon. كُنْ It happens. That's how quick it will happen. When Allah Taala says, be, It will take place as soon as He says, كُنْ It happens. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's no effort and hard work. And they put a, hard, a lot of hard work in making sure that they blow him into the wind. I mean, Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin disliked the usage of saying between the kaf and the noon. He didn't like that usage. And we disagree with it. When he was, when he was asked in his liqa' bab al-maftuha. Ala kulli hal. What he means is that kun bi and it would be. So that's what Allah wa ta'ala said. فَإِذَا رَجُلٌ قَائِمٌ When Allah said bi, then the man stood up. He's there. He's standing. ثُمَّ قَالَ Allah said Ay Abdi, my slave, ma hamalaka ala ma fa'alt. Remember, Allah is asking him a question of the answer he already knows. So he says to him, What made you do what you did? Why did you do this for? Why did you do what you did? Look at the response he gave. He said, Maka fatuka. Oh Allah, I feared you. I feared you. I was scared of you. Then what did the narration mention? Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala took him to Jannah. Allah bestowed his never ending mercy onto him. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Are you with me? Pay attention. What this man did is serious. He didn't do something very lightly. What he did was he went against Allah's qadr and qadr. He questioned Allah Taala's ability. He's able to do something. Why would he take his ashes in a windy day if he didn't know Allah can bring him together? But because he came with this action of khawf, fear, Allah Taala did this for him. He bestowed his mercy onto him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, the rulings and the regulations for the previous nations and our one, there was always that differences as well. So what we take from this is that Man Allahu, anyone who fears Allah, Amannahu wa Tama'annahu, Allah is going to place safety in your heart and tranquility, brothers and sisters. It is sad to see Muslims today who place so much hope in themselves and so much to think to themselves that they are safe as though they've got one leg in Jannah the way they live their lives rather my beloved brothers the person who fears Allah does not only receive and he does not only gain the mercy of Allah alone rather he gets a shade as well he gets a shade the day of judgment the day when the sun is brought, Allah is going to give him a shade. Based on the hadith of the Sahihain, in hadith Abi Huraira, that the Prophet ﷺ said, Seven types of people Allah is going to give them a shade. 
the day when there is no shade. And from those people, Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned. From those people, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned. وَرَجُلٌ a man دَعَتُمْ مَرَأَةٌ a woman calls him ذَاتُ مَنْصِبٍ وَجَمَالٍ. This woman's got status. She's the, the daughter of the queen, or uh, she's she's got a position, or maybe she's from a high lineage, a respected you know background. She's got. It's not like a uh, a, a woman who's uh, her, her her worth is very little. Meaning, there is. In other words, what the narration is trying to say is that there's all the factors that are going to push into her and to do zina with her. Wa jamalin and beauty. She's got everything in place. Naam. She's got a position. Whether she's wealthy, whether she is, uh, she's she's got a mansub, a position in the community. They all look up to her. Wajamalin and beauty. She's beautiful. So there's nothing that works against you for not doing zina with her. And she's calling you. Come. She's not asking for anything. She's got her money. She's got her mansub. Everything. She's calling you. And what stops you lacking? Not the. F- pay attention. Pay attention. The factors that are around her are not stopping you. Like you're not scared of any external fear There's no camera You're not scared of your family knowing None of that Every single thing works For you to do it That's what the narration is trying to say to you But There's only one thing that gets in your way Which is Inni akhafullah I fear Allah Some people thought That when he leaves off of a woman And he thinks to himself I let a woman go I didn't do zina with her But there are external factors That stopped him from it He thinks that He's going to fall under the shade, the seven shades of Jannah. It means a person who genuinely, he was for it. He likes the idea. There's nothing stopping him from doing it. There's no fear of everything, anything in his heart. Other than Allah wa ta'ala's fear. So you, you have to understand that point. That's a status that gives you a shade the day of Jannah. You're going to, shade, you're going to get a shade from the sun when the sun is going to be brought. So close And people are going to swim inside their, their sweats You're going to be given a shade that day Also from the beautiful hadith is ما رواه ترمذي وابن ماجه The narration of Imam Tirmidhi narrated in his Sunan And Ibn Majah narrated in his Sunan Or Tirmidhi narrated in his Jami' Because some people call the Tirmidhi Sunan a Jami' Or it is a Jami' to be honest But they call it a Sunan so it, it's taken two names. Wabnu Majah and Ibn Majah rahimahullah in his sunan. And other than them two, that the hadith of Aisha, she is the what? Zawjah in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet's wife. Okay? Back in the days, they never used to say Zawjah, but not with a ta'am marbota. They used to say Zawjah as, as a masculine usage. Zawjah has become usage and it's become the common used word. At this particular time Back in the days The man was called a zawj And the woman was called a zawj That's how it was So if I said right now Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha Zawjin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet's wife And I didn't say zawjah Then that wouldn't be wrong Anyways Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha The wife of the Prophet Alayhi salatu wa salam Fi dunya wal akhirah She's his wife in this dunya And she's his wife in jannah قالت, she said, سألت رسول الله, I asked the Prophet of Allah, عن هذه الآية, this verse, والذين يؤتون ما آتوا وقلوبهم وجلة. This verse, it says, they come with what they come with and their hearts are in a state of fear. They come with what they come with and their hearts are in a state of fear. Aisha then said, يا رسول الله, She's trying to ask the first part of the verse, which is what? وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا They come with that which they have come with. أَهُمُ الَّذِينَ يَشْرَبُونَ الْخَمْرَةِ Are they the ones who drink alcohol? وَيَسْرِقُونَ And they steal. She's asking a very powerful question. Is it that they are committing sins and they're scared? Is it that? Then the Prophet said to her, لَا يَا بِنْتَ الصِّدِّيقِ Know the daughter of Abu Bakr. وَلَكِنَّهُمُ الَّذِينَ يَصُومُونَ يَأْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا They are coming with that which they come with is that they are coming with righteous actions. They are praying. They are fasting. الَّذِينَ يَصُومُونَ وَيُصَلُّونَ They pray. وَيَتَصَدَّقُونَ And they give in charity. وَهُمْ But 
whilst they're coming with all those righteous actions, they are scared. They are scared that it's not going to be accepted from them. They're the ones who are going to hasten to the good. They're the ones who are going to hasten to the righteous actions. So what is it that they're scared of? Pay attention. They're scared. They're scared that this righteous actions that they have done, the fasting, the praying, the charities which they have given, the calling to the path of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, they are scared. They're scared that it might not be accepted from them. That it will come the day of judgment and Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will say to them, to them, that all your righteous deeds that you've done, I haven't taken into consideration. Oh, your fasting I haven't taken into consideration. So they come bankrupt. They come deficient. They're scared. They are scared. <coughs> but even that though they're scared, there are promises that are there for them. They're not sticking with those verses. Look how pious they are. They're not looking at Qawluhu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah that says, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who come with Iman. وَعَامِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they come with righteous actions. فَيُوَفِّيهِمْ أُجُورَهُمْ Allah is going to fulfill their promise, uh, the, the covenants and the promises that He's made. فَيُوَفِّيهِمْ أُجُورَهُمْ That Allah is going to reward them for the good that they have done, the righteous actions that they have come with. Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 70. Three, they turn a blind eye on that verse. They don't look at it. Rather, that verse is not just saying that Allah is going to reward them for the good that they've done. They could have actually stuck to that verse and lived by it. Which is, Qawluhu Ta'ala, Allah carries on saying, لِيُوَفِّيَهُمْ أُجُورَهُمْ وَيَزِيدَهُمْ مِنْ فَضْرِهِ Allah will increase it for him, for them, from his own virtue. From his own virtue, he's going to increase it for them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what they do is, and Allah is not one who breaks, makes a promise and breaks his promise. But because they want to be on the safe side, because they are righteous, they're righteous. It's made them become serious with themselves. And the way they deal with themselves, they're serious. They're very serious. Now let's look at the different types, or the different levels, sorry. The different levels. There are different levels of khawf. Okay? There are different levels of khawf. The first one is, al khawfu min makrillahi ta'ala. Abu Hamid al-Ghazali rahimahullah in his kitab Ihya' Ulum al-Din when he talks about this issue Abu Hamid al-Ghazali he categorizes it into two and if you look at it it seems very good mashallah his categorization here he says that the khawf is two types the first one is al-khawfu min adabihi fear of Allah's punishment subhanahu wa ta'ala al-khawfu fear of min adabihi the punishment of Allah and the second one which is Al Khawfu Minhu, the fear of Allah Himself, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Are you with me? He says that, he says that the level which is the highest is the fear of Allah Ta'ala Himself. And he goes on to say in Ibn uh, Muhammad al-Ghazali that the fear of him, Allah wa ta'ala, that status is for the, that status, the righteous people, the anbiya and the rusul have reached that level and the malaika. As for the khawf min adabi from the punishment of Allah, and this fahuwa khawfu umum al-khalqi, this is for the general, majority, all the people they fall under that, or the general, and he says this is the asal of the iman. That's the minimum that everybody has to come with. But the categorization that we're doing is that the first type is, the first one we're doing is that al-khawfu min makri lahi ta'ala is to be scared of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's planning. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah said in Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 99, أَفَ أَمِنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ Have they found safety from the plannings of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala? فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ The only people who find safety from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's planning are the ones who are lost. 
the person, my beloved brothers and sisters, who finds safety and believes he is safe, min makrillahi from the plans of Allah, it shows alama to shoot me that you are truly a destroyed individual. That's what it shows. Wa alama to khusran and that you are a person who is upon loss, misguidance, and deviation. How could you find safety when your hearts are between his two fingers? He tosses it and he turns it the way he wills. Subhanahu wa taala. Based on the hadith Sahih Muslim, min hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, that Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As he said, I heard the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, "Inna quluba bani Adam, the children of Adam, their hearts are, kullaha, all of them, bina isbaini min asabi al-Rahmani, between two fingers of the fingers of Allah tabarak wa taala, ka qalbin wahid, like all of them are like one heart in between the fingers of Allah tabarak wa taala." يُصَرِّفُهُ حَيْثُ يَشَاءُ Allah turns it and tosses it the way He wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the messenger said after he told the companions this, اللَّهُمَّ مُصَرِّفَ الْقُلُوبِ O oh Allah, the one who turns and tosses the heart of His creation, صَرِّفْ قُلُوبَنَا عَلَىٰ طَاعَتِكَ Turn our hearts towards your obedience. And Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad and Tirmidhi in his Jami'u Tirmidhi or in, or in his Sunan on the authority of Umm Salama رضي الله تعالى عنها that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ آدَمِيٌّ There is not a human إِلَّا وَقَلْبُهُ بَيْنَ أُصْبُعَيْنِ مِنْ أَصَابِعِ الرَّحْمَانِ Except that his heart is between the two fingers of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. فَمَنْ شَاءَ أَقَامَهُ وَمَنْ شَاءَ أَزَاغَهُ Whoever Allah wills, he places his heart steadfast and upright. And whoever Allah wills, he deviates him. And then, فَتَلَى مُعَاذٌ مُعَاذِ بْنُ جَبَلٍ recited the verse. And Mu'adh here is not Mu'adh ibn Jabal, rather it is from one of the Ruwat, the narrators of the chain of narration. He said, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَ لَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ So we say, نَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُثَبِّتَ قُلُوبَنَا May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala keep our hearts steadfast. My beloved brothers and sisters, how many people have we seen who are guided yesterday, who are righteous yesterday, who are upright yesterday, who are steadfast yesterday? And today they are what? Today they are misguided, deviating and lost. How many people have we seen who were believers yesterday? They were people who believed in Allah on the day of judgment yesterday. And today they are people who are who are disbelievers of Allah. How many sisters have we seen who yesterday were covered? Yesterday were shy and they were upright and they were steadfast. And today we find that they are not wearing hijab, shyness has gone and they are not following the commands of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. How many people have we found that were rich yesterday? They had money and they were well off and today they are fuqara, hungry and in need of Allah and they have nothing. How many people have we found who yesterday were honorable and respected and today they have, they have become dhalil. They are looked down on and they have no value, no nothing. So this all shows what? فَلَا تَأْمَنْ مَكْرَ اللَّهِ don't find safety from Allah's plans, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always be vigilant and always be worried and concerned. Because we're not only worried alone from Allah wa ta'ala's plan, but we're also worried about the situation and the current position of the Muslims today. When you look at the time of the, the time that we're living today, and if you look at the place that we're living today. There are many factors that actually scare a person very much. The fitna is being thrown at the people's hearts. The shubuhat and the shahawat. The way it's being thrown at the people's hearts. And Imam Muslim narrated in his sahih. In hadith of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. Radhi Allahu ta'ala anhu. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Tu'radhu al-fitanu ala al-qulubi kal-hasidi uda uda. Fa'ayyu qalbin ushribaha nukitat fihi nuktatun sawda. Wa'ayyu qalbin ankaraha nukitat. نُكِتَ فِيهِ نُكْتَةُ الْبَيْضَاءِ حَتَّى تَصِيرُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبَيْنِ عَلَىٰ أَبْيَضَ مِثْلَ الصَّفَاءِ فَلَا تَضُرُّهُ فِتْنَةُ الْمَدَامَةِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْآخَرُ أَسْوَدَ أَسْوَدُ مُرْبَاعًا أما مُرْبَادًا سوري كَالْكُوزِ مُجَخِّيًا لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا إلا ما أشرب من هواها The Prophet tells صلى الله عليه وسلم that the fitna is thrown at the people's hearts it's thrown at it like that, like that, just thrown at it. Some people's hearts, the people are too, when it comes to the fitna, this is being thrown at their hearts. A heart 
who swallows everything, he takes in everything. He drinks all the fitna that's been thrown at it. Huh? We have who are throwing those fitna. We have the disbelievers who are throwing f- all of their all of their shubuhat and their doubts at the Muslims. And we have the Ahlul Bid'a, the people of innovation coming and they're throwing all their doubts at the Muslims. A while back I was reading the statement of Al-Allama and he was a faqih bima'na al-kalima Al-Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin rahimahullahu ta'ala Ibn Uthaymin when he was talking about running away from the innovators and not being close to them and not associating yourself with them and not sitting in their gatherings and not listening to what they have to say alayhi rahmatullah he used an evidence of the hadith of Dajjal the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said if you hear Dajjal is coming, run away. Don't go anywhere close to him. And Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin's observation was powerful. Because Dajjal, were we told to run away from him? Is it an issue of ta'abudi or is it issue which is mu'allal? A reason is being given to it. Or is it just mujarrad ta'abudi? Brothers, some things are ta'abudi, meaning we don't know what it's for. We don't understand the, the reason behind it. Not that it doesn't have a reason. It does have, have a reason. It's just we don't know, we just do it. We stay away from pork because it's ta'abudi. It's not mu'allal. No one can give you a reason why we stay away from pork. No one can. Sah? It's a qadiyah which is ta'abudi. But we know why we stay away from alcohol. Because it's mu'allal. It's intoxication and etc. etc. The reason why we have to stay away from the jal and run away from him is an issue which is not ta'abudi. Rather, it is an issue of ta'alil. There's a reason behind it. And once a evidence comes stating why something is prohibited or why it's legislated, and there's, it's a mansus, there's a illa that's been mentioned with it, that illa can now then be used for analogy, qiyas, for other things. But if the issue is ta'abudi, there's no way you can use, you can't do qiyas of it. Because one of the rukun of a qiyas is a illa, right? One of the four pillars for a qiyas is a illa. From the asal and the fara' You have to have illa that they have in common So Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen Said that the illa why the Prophet told us To stay away from Dajjal and run away from him Is because of the And the narrations mentioned is because of the The people are going to believe him to be. They're going to see him as a believer They will think he's a believer They will, be, they will think of him as a person who's righteous A person of khair Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen says that the same is with the Mubtadi' and Ahl al-Bid'ah the people think they're good. The people think they're righteous. You see? And now what is actually shocking is that the way we were told to stay away from the things that would cause fitna to our hearts and cause corruption to our hearts and might even put doubts in our hearts, some people would actually easily want to bring those innovators to the people's eyes and facilitate the people with them and actually say to the people, here they are, you know, benefit from them. They're people of knowledge. And give them statuses so the Muslim's heart can be corrupted. And that black dot that keeps going to the people's hearts can keep going to their hearts, keep going to their hearts, and keep going to their hearts. Well, if you observe today, yeah, if you observe, go to Hyde Park, for instance. Watch the debates that take place between the Muslims and the disbelievers in Hyde Park. Pay attention. The disbeliever will tell you the Quran is distorted. He will have a book of the Rafid of the Shia to prove it. He will use their books to show you that the Quran is distorted. This individual, and I don't like mentioning names, but uh, and I don't want to mention his name. But this kafir guy, he's a white guy, kafir in America. He pushed another kafir guy to say that he left Islam. He's now a Muslim. He's now a disbeliever. He's a Christian and he calls to Christianity. You refuted him a while back. Huh? This individual, he tells the people that he was a Muslim before. That he was Ahmadi, right? He was a Qadiani. He wasn't even a Muslim. Are you with me? So they, they use him to convince the Muslims that he saw the reality of Islam, that it's a religion that contradicts itself, and that it's baseless, and that Christianity is worse, huh? where the haq stands. <laughs> so what I mean by that is that the enemies of Islam are going to use the innovators as a stepping stone to destroy Islam. The enemies who are going to let the disbelievers come in and give them a platform to argue against Islam are the innovators. They're the ones who have to be dealt with first. Because it's the innovators who start showing 
things to the disbelievers. The disbelievers don't come to our houses and know what's inside it. Right? It's the mubtadi' the innovator, who starts saying we're not going to take a singular narration. And then that becomes a stepping stone for the Qur'an you to come. Are you with me? When a person says I'm not going to take singular narration, whatever argument he uses to say I'm not going to take singular narration is the argument that can be used for to him to not even use, to not what? If you look at his Dar'u Ta'arud al-Aql wa al when he speaks about Abu Hamid al-Ghazali's refutation of the philosopher and whatnot, Ibn Taymiyyah refutes that the philosopher can hold Abu Hamid al-Ghazali for some matters. And that Sha'ira themselves. Huh? The philosophers, I mean Abu Hamid al-Ghazali refute, refuted the philosophers, but the foundations that he's using and things that he's applying for them and the arguments that he's bringing can be turned on him because he uses it for some other places in other matters of aqaid issues related issues so what it means my beloved brothers and sisters is that the person should be scared and worried and f- because this is a, a religious matter and your heart are between the two fingers of Allah and you can toss and turn and leave the religion anytime your religion has to be something you safeguard protect your religion don't let every single person come and play around with your religion for you. And place doubt in your heart towards, to, you, to, to your religion. Naam. So that's of a very great importance. And that's why the Sahabas and the Tabi'een. Like to the extent my beloved brothers and sisters. Look at the importance of this. Aisha who is the wife of the Prophet. Do you know any woman in this Ummah more knowledgeable than Aisha? The messenger looked at her and he said to her. إِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُوضُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ Aisha, if you see anyone indulging in our verses, talking about our religion without understanding and comprehension, turn away from them. Aisha has been said. And then you say, no, I'm taking the good and I'm leaving off the bad. I'm taking the good and I'm leaving off the If you can tell the difference between good and bad, then why are you listening to me in the first place? You're a person of knowledge. You're a person of knowledge if you can actually tell the difference between what's right and wrong. Isn't that what knowledge is? No. So this is Wallah is Wasawishu Shaytan is the whispers of Shaytan. Be scared. Be worried. Be concerned for your deen, for your religion. If somebody called you today and said to you, Aki, tomorrow you have surgery? Are you meeting a doctor? Naam. He's a he's not a doctor. He's a fraudster. Stay away. Wallahi, you'll be so happy. Wallahi, you would accept it. And you'll be so pleased with it. But if a person called you today and said to you, this person you're talking to and you're taking your religion from is a fraudster, fraudster. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. What do you call it? You would start saying, I don't believe you. Leave me alone. Huh? Allahumma sallim. Allah, give us safety. And protect our iman and our hearts for us. And turn our hearts to that which is pleasing to you. Every single group I've seen today it's, a sh- it's shocking It's actually shocking If you look at the deviated groups that came out today If you look at them today For example, Ikhwanul Muslimin You look at Hizb tahrir Are you with me? If you look at these groups They all came after 1914 They all came a- a- after the Ottoman Empire Okay when the Ottoman Empire was going down, this is what the groups came. So 1,000 something years, the Muslims were all misguided before Hizb uh, al Muslimi came and Hizb al-Tahrir came and Tabliq came. The Muslims were upon misguidance until they came. Who gave birth to? Who gave birth to? Well, one of the things that remind me is Hudayfa ibn al-Yamal said on the fit of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, if the fitna of Uthman was of any khair, the Muslims would have, they would have, you know, the camel when it's Breasts are full. The breasts of the camel when they are full. And it's, and it's a prosperous. Or when it's a, a bliss. Or huh? Are you with me brothers? When the uh, green, the grass are green. And, and, and the camels and the, and, and, the, uh, and the goats are full. What happens? The people can take, take milk from it. And that's, that, that shows a sign of barakah and khayr that's happening for the time. He said if the fitna of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. His fitna 
was of any khair, the Muslims would have squeezed milk out of it. But what they squeezed out of it was blood. That statement applies with these Ahzab and these groups, if you look at them today. When they came, Al-Qaeda came, ISIS came, they gave birth to all of those groups. The Muslims, all they squeezed out of it today is blood and bloodshed. That's what we took from it. Bloodshed and dying and fitna that we, we saw from it. Ikhwan Wallahi, anybody who is one who wants khair and haq for himself, sarahatan, one evidence is enough for him. Yesterday I was speaking to a guy. He said to me, Akhi, breaking into groups, part and tahazubat, tajammuat, and etc. He said it's permissible. What's the problem? Ta'addudat is permissible. Ta'addud al jama'at. It's no problem. What's haram about it? I asked him one question. I said, one question to him. Yesterday. No, it was today, today, today. I said to him, he, he was a Hezbo Tahrir group. I said, how about we break your group into 10? Actually, you're, you're large in number now. You're big. Let's take Hezbo Tahrir and break them into groups. What did he say? That's Wallahi what he said to me. He said, don't do tafarruq. Don't break the jama'ah. Why are you going to break the jama'ah for? Sahih. And that ayah is used for who the believers, the Muslims, to be united and come together, right? This is exactly what it is. Their evil act has become beautified to them. Allah says, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا Shall we tell you a people whose actions are upon loss? الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعَيُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ سُنْعًا a person who spends the rest of his life thinking he's doing good. Working towards that which disobeys Allah wa ta'ala and goes against him. Where did we take? Ibadah is what? Everything Allah loves and is pleased with. Sahih? No. Is this pleasing to Allah? The things that we have seen, the corruption that you guys have caused, the bloodshed that's happened. You guys gave birth to this. Wallahi, this has nothing to do with da'wah salafiyyah and da'wah ahli sunnah wal jama'ah. Fi shay. You guys are the ones who gave birth to this. And that's the thing that we're, we're, we're now squeezing out of the situation of the Muslims. Naam. <clears throat> I'll stop there inshallah ta'ala for today. Anything which I have said that was wrong, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَانِ مِنْ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْه